Hi, this is Emiliano Andino with a special report from Argentina. We have had a recent victory on what Lindo LaRouche called Operation Kepler, a project for international cooperation to observe the Earth from space so as to develop a profound knowledge about the physical processes that govern the behavior of our planet. Argentina's space agency CONAI, through cooperation with NASA, has built and put into orbit a satellite designed for measuring a wide spectrum of parameters, which will allow us to monitor and discover much more of those galactic processes that affect our planet so much. With the launching of this SAG-D Aquarius observation satellite, a multiple layer process deploys. First, the amplification of our senses through these instruments that will allow us to artificially perceive what we biologically cannot, the so-called extended sensorium. But that only has real value if it is taken with the adequate hypothesis that during these times to come, there is the urgent search for understanding the simultaneous interaction of radiation in the domain of our solar system and of our galaxy. The SACD uh, Aquarius, built in Argentina and launched by NASA on Friday, June 10th, from the Vandenberg launch pad in California, carries on nine observation instruments, one from the US, two from France, one from Italy, and five from Argentina. The Aquarius, a new technology instrumentation built by NASA, is now measuring the salinity of oceans and will give us a complete global map of the thermal currents, much better than the one we use today based on floating sensors. The rest of the instrumentation will be capable of measuring the humidity and temperature of soils, continental water bodies, intensity and distribution of night lights, snow quantity and distribution, precipitations, wind speeds, ice concentration, volcanic ash density, effects of cosmic radiation on electronic devices and many natural catastrophe precursors. These are strategic parameters to develop better climate models, generate early alerts on floods and droughts, available water for next summer, monitoring the dispersal of diseases and could also warn us on coming hurricanes and earthquakes. With that on mind, let's see now a report on the ground. Hello, this is Betiana Gonzalez and this is an on the ground report from Argentina. We just uh, saw the launching of the SAC, the satellite from the series Aquarius, which is a collaboration between different countries, including NASA and CONAE, which is the space agency in Argentina. As Barotto, the head of uh, CONAE in Argentina, said, and also our president, Cristina Fernandez de Kirchner, this is a very important step for Argentina. It's a historical moment because we just launched the fourth uh, of our satellites, and this satellite will contribute to measured salinity levels and also help uh, with collecting data for temperature levels, cosmic radiation, atmospheric changes, and all of this is crucial for earthquake precursors and also for volcanic eruption precursors. So this satellite has a mission, which is to integrate all these areas, all these different components to contribute uh, to to contribute to have a different map of the world, which we haven't had in the, 40, in the past 40 years. So the mission is very important because it will help the region and the world to have a sense of how science and technology can be implemented to improve the production capacities in an economy. So in a moment of crisis worldwide where uh, different governments are going for austerity plans and are cutting down uh, the budgets on science and are speculating and contributing to bailouts, actually Argentina is the country which is going through a different process is is going through an economic driven process with science and technology and this is a contribution from our country to, to the entire world so this is our underground report 
So, while the dictators of the monetarist system are pressuring nations to adopt austerity measures, including cuts on scientific research, channeling those funds to bail out the speculators and bankrupt banks, and brutally declaring that there is nothing else to discover, the SAC D Aquarius represents a renaissance of space programs based on international cooperation and with public access to all the gathered information. Now, this kind of commitment and initiative does not come from out of nowhere. This is the classic humanistic scientific legacy that for centuries runs away from the persecution by the imperial system, moving from continent to continent, to avoid perishing in nations taking over by that oligarchical system. In this case today, we are in the forefront of another expression of that process, when we see this vibrant identification with science in Argentina, a particular development with great advances in the last century, but mainly after the 1940s, during Juan Perón's first presidency, when scientists and engineers from France, Italy, and mainly Germany, found in Argentina a fertile culture interested in sowing this passion for ideas. The efforts towards thermonuclear energy and the successful development of aeronautics, rocketry, biology, and space medicine established a legacy that today we see revived. At the beginning of the 1930s, Argentina space pioneer Teófilo Tabanera insisted on our natural destiny towards space exploration and colonization as an inevitable and unpostponable step. His leadership sparked general interest and teased the future coming of those immigrants looking for scientific freedom. Because of that, apart from the known jet aircrafts developed at the same time than the US and the Soviet Union, Argentina had been capable of supporting a space project based in its own rocketry that almost died in the 1990s, when then Secretary of Defense Dick Cheney took personal charge on dismantling the Condor missile project. The Condor, a medium-range missile, meant two things. The potential capacity to put satellites in orbit independently as also the power to reach the Malvinas Islands, two potentials the British Empire sincerely hate. We need to hold on tight to this mission, since it defines our own future, the collapse of our species, or our transcending this coming long galactic season of natural catastrophes. And in that sense, it is very useful to listen the words of Conrado Barotto, director of CONAE, Argentina Space Agency, with whom I leave you until the next report. Es un gran objetivo de todo el plan espacial nuestro es en lo que hace las emergencias naturales y a la salud, no solamente actuar cuando ocurren y dar información para lo que se llama la etapa de mitigación, que es muy muy importante, sino poder con el tiempo dar lo que se llama la alerta temprana, o sea, avisar antes que ocurra, para que en los casos que se puede evitar, evitarlo, y en los casos que se pueda prepararse para que el daño sea menor, se sea menor. Eso es un eh, objetivo muy importante de toda la actividad espacial, se está trabajando muchísimo en esa línea, y vuelvo a siempre decir, el sueño del pibe mío es que algún día podamos avisar de que los terremotos con seis meses de anticipación.